Hey guys, in this video we're going to go through how you multiply decimals. So I'm going to give you lots of examples, three different levels of examples, and then slowly walk you through how to do it. If you want more examples like this, there are loads and loads of questions over on my website for you to practice. And you can pause this video, try and beat me to the answers. Then you can skip forward and do some slightly harder questions. Or if you start with the really hard questions, you can skip backwards and then slowly work your way up. These are the questions that we're going to be going over in this video video you don't have to start at the beginning you can start at the middle then if you're struggling with those you can step backwards or if you start in the middle and find them too easy then you can step forwards these are the questions we are going to start with now before we start on any of these questions it is important to think about how we actually do multiplication so when we're doing seven times two it's seven plus seven it's two lots of seven which gives us 14. If we're doing 7 times 1, that's 1 lot of 7, which gives us the same number, 7. But if we want to do 7 times 0 0.5, what is that actually asking us? It's actually asking us, what is half of 7? And half of 7 is 3.5. Now, if we were to take those same numbers but slightly different, and do seven times five, we would get 35. I just want you to notice the similarity between that and the previous question, seven times 0 0.5. And you'll see in their question, the only difference is the introduction of this decimal. So introducing a decimal in the question in front of the five, 0 0.5, will introduce a decimal in the answer. Even though the answer is very, very similar to 7 times 5, introducing a decimal in the question will introduce decimal in the answer. So we already have the answer to our first question. That is 3.5. Now we can look at our next one. And what we're going to do here is 9 times 6, which is 54. And then, because we have a decimal in the question, we can put decimal in in the answer as well. Moving on to our next question, 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. Now the first thing we are going to do is look at the, the numbers and we are going to do three times three. And because both parts of the question have a decimal in, there are two decimals in the question, then we need to put two decimals in the answer as well. There they are, one and two. So our answer is 0 0.09. And you can just think of this as moving, for every decimal in the question, we need to move the decimal point backwards to the left, the same number of spaces. Our next question, 0 0.4 times 0 0.9. The first thing we need to do is four times 9, giving us 36. Now there are two decimals in the question, the 0.4 and the 0.9, and the decimal place is currently residing after the 6. Because we have two decimals, we need to move that decimal place two places to the left, putting it in front of the 3, giving us an answer of 0 0.36. The next one. 0 0.6 times 0 0.5, 5 times 6 will give us 30. And again, we have two decimals. The decimal place is currently residing after the 0, after the 30. And we need to move that two places to the left. So it will go in front of the 3, giving us 0 0.3 as our answer. If we wanted to do 0 0.6 times 2... We would do 6 times 2, giving us 12, and move the decimal place 1 over to give us 1.2. The other way we can think of this is 0 0.6 times 1, and we have two lots of that. 
we can go downwards and do 0 0.6 times 0 0.5. So half of 0 0.6 times 1, which will give us 0 0.3. We can see that 6 times 5, very similar to our 0 0.6 times 0 0.5. 6 times 5 will give us 30. And there you can see the space after the 0 0.3 where the 30 would have been. The next set of questions we're moving on to now, slightly more complicated as they involve slightly more complicated numbers. So we're going to do this in the same way. Ignoring the decimals to start with, we're going to do 37 times 16. If you're confused about how to do long multiplication or column multiplication, then you can go and have a look at my video on that. We're going to start by doing 37 times 6, giving us 222, and then 37 times 10, giving us 370. We can add those together to get 592 as our answer. Now we need to look again at the question. It is 0.37 times 0.16. We in effect have four decimal places there. The decimal place is currently after the 2, so we need to move it four spaces backwards. So our answer will be 0 0.0592. Moving on to the next question, we're going to start it in the same way. So we're going to start it by doing 72 times 82. We're going to start off with the 2 and multiply that by 72, giving us 144. Moving on to multiplying it by the 80, we can say that 80 times 2 is 160, carry the 1 up, doing the rest of it will give us 5,760, and adding all of that together will give us 5,904. If we go back to look at the question, we have four decimal places in the question. One, two, three, four needed in the answer as well. So decimal place is currently after the four. It needs to move four spaces to the left, so it goes in front of the five, giving us an answer of 0 0.5904. Moving on to the next question now, we're going to start by doing 96 times 94. 4 times 6 gives us 24. Carry the 4 over. 4 times 90 is 360 plus the 2 gives us 384 as the total for that section. 9 times 6 is 54. Carry the 5 over, giving us uh, 8,640 for that bit. Adding them together will give us 9,024. Now again, for this one, we have four decimals in the question. One, two, three, four. So we need four in the answer. Three, four. Decimal place is currently after the four. It needs to move four places to the left to go in front of the nine giving us 0 0.9024 as the answer. The next one, we're going to start in the same way, doing 66 times 45, giving us 2,970. Now, in the question, we only have two decimal places. So the decimal place, the point that's currently after the zero, needs to move two decimal places to the left. So it goes in between the nine and the seven, giving us 29.70 as our answer. The last question for this section, and we're going to start by doing 52 times three. This is going to give us 156. Now, if we look in the question, we can see one, two, three decimal places there, which means that point, which is currently after the six, needs to move 
three places to the left and go in front of the one, giving it as the final answer of 0.156. The last set of questions here, and these are slightly nastier because we've thrown some fractions in as well. So we can rewrite this as decimal. So we can write 0 0.8 times a half as 0 0.8 times 0 0.5. And then we can treat it exactly the same as we have the other questions. 8 times 5 will give us 40. In the question, we have two decimal places. So we need to move the decimal point two places to the left so it goes in front of that four giving us a final answer of 0 0.40. This can of course be rewritten as simply 0 0.4. 0 0.1 times a quarter can also be written as 0 0.1 times 0 0.25. It is really important that you are learning your fraction to decimal conversions. They will make things easier in the long run. So for this, we simply do 1 times 25, which is nicely 25. Looking at the question, there are three decimal places. So we need to move that decimal point three spaces backwards, putting a zero in front of the two putting the decimal point in front of that, giving us an answer of 0 0.025. For the next question, we're going to start in the same way and do 498 times 2, giving us 996. Now, looking at the question, we've got something that's to one decimal place and something that's to three decimal places, giving us four decimal places in total, which means that's how many we need in the answer. So in front of that nine, we need to put a zero. In front of that goes the decimal point, another zero in front of that. And then because in the question it was minus 0.498, we need to put that in there as well giving us an answer of minus 0 0.0996. The next question, we need to do 425 times 7, giving us an answer of 2,975. In the question, we have four decimal places in total, so that is how many we need in the answer, putting the decimal point in front of the two. And again, because this was a minus in the question, we need to put that in the answer as well, giving us an overall answer of minus 0 0.297. Another fraction in the last question. Now, the previous fractions might have been very obvious to you, but this one might not be. So 1 over 5 is 0.2, making 2 over 5 naught point 0.4. Your life will be much easier if you learn these, and I have flashcards available for you on my website to help you do this. So we are going to do 2 times 4, giving us an answer of 8. Because it was 0.2 times minus 0.4, there are two decimal places involved in that, meaning we need to move our decimal point two spaces to the left, putting a zero in front of that eight, decimal point in front of that, and another zero. And because it was a negative in the question, we need to put a, no a negative in front of that, making our final answer minus 0 0.08. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too crim.